Let's talk to James Price, former government advisor. Uh, he knows a thing or two about how governments uh, use information and how uh, they use it sometimes to their advantage. This is a staggering uh, revelation to me, James. Uh, first of all, Keir Starmer yesterday refusing to say um, why uh, he can't show the, uh, the, 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 the homework, if you like, on why they've decided they have to withdraw this pensioners' uh, winter fuel payment. Uh, doesn't want to show the impact of means testing. Now it turns out that Rachel Reeves doesn't want to show us her homework on the £22 billion black hole. How extraordinary. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, it, this idea that Starmer said, you know, the government's going to tread a little bit less softly on your lives, a little bit more softly. <laughs> and, and the idea that he's going to say, right, we're going to tell you the truth now. He stood in the Rose Garden of number 10 Downing Street and said it's all going to be wonderful and happy and all the rest of it. And then oh, it turns out it's a lot more difficult than that. Yes. As the, the song in the, the musical Hamilton said, winning is easy, governing is harder. <laughs> and unfortunately for most people at home, it'll remind them of the old joke. I mean, how do you know a politician is lying? Well, their lips are moving. Exactly and right. Not good for public trust. It really isn't. And I mean, uh, not only is the winter fuel allowance withdrawal um, causing all sorts of ruptures inside the Labour Party and all around the country, but it's also got people talking about the amount of money that MPs are able to claim. You know, the old expenses scandal is back, basically, because they can claim their utility bills, including gas, electricity, other fuel and water bills on expenses at a single property either in London or in their constituency. We had uh, James Cleverly on yesterday and I was having a go at the Labour people for taking the money and then withdrawing it from the pensioners uh, because it turns out that Labour have claimed collectively £450,000 uh, in heating um, expenses since 2019, right? And these are the same people who say pensioners can't have any. Um, so, ridiculously, None of them um, have, and Rachel Greaves is among them, by the way. Rachel Greaves, I think, has claimed something like four and a half thousand of that of that money. So, I mean, I'm saying we should now start, should we not, some kind of campaign to re redraw once again um, the government expenses allowance system. Yeah, it, it, it does seem uh, unbelievably hypocritical. It follows on the back of Angela Rayner trying to get rid of Margaret Thatcher's landmark right to buy when she herself benefited to the tune of, what was it, £50,000 being able to, to buy her council house and have the glory of owning her own home. Right. This kind of hypocrisy is it's staggering. And the fact that they've had 14 years in opposition to be ready for these sorts of things right. and to be prepared for it and to have people to be expecting it, the fact that they're still so shambolic about it proves that they're not at all ready for government. Now, I'm going to say something that is very unpopular. I think that MPs are paid far too little, mm. actually, by and large. If you look at somewhere like Singapore, and Singapore is a model of good governance. It was founded essentially by a man called Lee Kuan Yew, who came to Britain in the 50s and marveled at how wonderfully Britain was administrated. Yeah. And he walked around and he saw there was an honesty box for buying newspapers. You'd leave a shilling in this little box, you'd take a newspaper. And he thought, I can't believe that this country is so wonderful that people can be trusted to do things like that well now you can do things like that in singapore you leave your mobile phone on a table and that's fine that means that's your table now no yeah. one's gonna nick it because they know the consequences and, and what happens in singapore when it comes to politicians pay well the prime minister is paid a million pounds a year mm. and when you said look it's true we've got the best paid politicians in the world but i can guarantee you they're not the richest because he knows that means, therefore, that they wouldn't be going and taking bribes or bungs or the kind of horrendous corruption we see in other parts of the world. And it also means they've got unbelievably talented people being prime minister. Do we think that our politicians are the most talented people we could possibly get? They're, Absolutely they're not. They're probably I'm, not, but I mean, I, I, there's also too much of it in this country. I mean, I think we've already got too much administration. You know, we've got local councils. Um, we've got, you know, and, um, M -E -M -M we used to have MEPs, we used to have MPs, we've got Lords. You know, I think the whole system needs to be maybe slimmed down and you have fewer constituencies, um, perhaps, and bigger constituencies, and fewer actual representatives. And then that way, the whole system would work better. I don't mind paying them a little bit more. I'm, I'm a bit uneasy about paying them too much money um, but I just think the expenses system is wrong as well you know you should not be claiming your heating in a second home that you're only in half the time you know it's just not right nobody else gets to do it I mean look at Keir Starmer with his you know suits from Wahid Ali you know I buy my own clothes as I'm sure you do um, <laughs> you know I don't ask somebody to buy my glasses for me when I have to go and get new ones I don't ask people to pay for my my electricity bill I don't ask people to pay for my my food bill you know I used to get expenses when I worked in newspapers I don't get them anymore and the tax man doesn't allow them anymore so you know you're screwed basically and I think that's where the problem lies people see an unfairness in the system and they don't like it.
Yeah, absolutely right. Well, look, there's, there's a lot in there that I agree with. I, I think that if you were going to plan how to administer Britain, how to run it, you wouldn't go with the system we've got now. No. And it's a big tension between uh, an idea I agree with, which is that decisions should be made as close as possible to where they're going to have an effect. The idea that you would have these sort of metro mayors, some of which have been pretty good, and they have kind of executive authority over certain areas. I've got some sympathy with that, but of course you need to make sure you've got talented people mm. doing that. You won't, again, get talented people doing that if they're not paid very well and if they've not got that kind of power or authority to do it. So there's a bit of a chicken and egg in there. And when it comes to the, the expenses of MPs, again, I think that the reason you had that scandal in part was because there was a general recognition even 15 odd years ago that people weren't being paid terribly well. And as your listeners and viewers will know, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys, and, and that's a big problem we've that's got. True. That's true. But a lot of people listening to, listening to you, James, and listening and watching us this morning will say, well, £91,000 is what they now get, because somehow, despite all of the uh, inflationary pay rises or not inflationary pay rises that the public sector has got over the years, the MPs have always managed to somehow get themselves bumped up every single year. They're now getting ninety one grand a year. Now, you might say in London that's not worth as much money as it used to be, and you'd probably be right. But for most people listening to this and watching this this morning, that is an absolute fortune well it's, it certainly is if you're going to get high quality people and again if you get high quality people in but if you're getting rubbish people then you know, market forces would are going to be a bit unpopular you might want to bump those numbers up mm. to do it. or you give them a much big flatter salary overall and then not give them expenses and say right you've got to go and struggle with the housing market in london which is completely broken in itself and expose mps to some more of the effects of the decisions they make and nowhere is more clear about this than when it comes to something like people's personal security. Mm. You go into Parliament and it's full of, of wonderful police officers who keep everybody in there safe, as well it should be. You know, they're armed to the teeth and they're well-trained and the rest of it, so politicians can go in there and feel safe. Meanwhile, they're not addressing terrible problems like crime on the rest of our mm. streets, and the rest of us were suffering. And so, you know, I think that if you're going to pay people properly in, in Parliament, they need to also be exposed to the kind of decisions they make. How mm. about this for a compromise? If they get the, the economy going, they get growth rate, to two and a half percent then they all get bonuses the way you get in banks yeah. i would be perfectly happy with that because it would mean that taxes could come down or that more infrastructure could be built and there'd be more jobs for people going and a rising tide lifts all ships but if the economy goes down again then the mps lose their salaries i think that would focus minds a lot more on what really matters yeah i like the sound of that that sounds like a very sensible idea excellent stuff james thank you very much indeed james price former government advisor maybe that's the thing you know carrot and stick if you want to come and work in Parliament, uh, you get more money the better job you do, performance-related. You could also tie it to constituency work that you do as well.